something to say, something to say. Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21, and yes, I know it's been forever. <sighs> Sorry about that, guys. Life has been busy, but you know what? I'm not gonna make any excuses. I'm just gonna dive right in. So, so everybody, so as you can see in front of me, we've got something new. And those who've been following on social media already know about this. But I'm gonna go ahead and give a quick rundown of what the heck is going on. But first off, what the heck is going on? So I just happened to be cruising by my favorite hobby shop, Hobby Hanger in Chantilly, Virginia. And I cruised in and I saw this thing just kind of sitting in there. And this was actually a consignment sale. They do consignments there. So this was a customer's ride. And they originally were trying to sell it for over $300. Didn't sell. They moved the price down a little bit. Didn't sell. Finally, they marked it down to $175. And that's when I just happened to walk in. At that point, I'm looking at this thing. It's like, I could sell the electronics and maybe the tires and probably pay for the price of this car. So I thought this was a great deal. So I posted it on one of the Facebook groups and people start calling the store and I slept on it overnight and thought about, you know what? Screw that. I'll just pick it up for myself. So here I have a original edition Arma Typhoon BLX. So this guy's been, let's just say well loved, meaning it's been a uh, well used. Um, let me just go ahead and just dive in. But um, so there's some good things and bad things about this car. So I'm gonna be giving uh, my typical pattern. I'm gonna do a complete tear down and rebuild of this thing. I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. And that's a highly recommended thing. If I know a lot of guys like to pick up cars secondhand, whether it's off of eBay or off of some of the, uh, the Facebook groups or Craigslist or whatever you want to do. And picking up a used car is a great way of saving some money and getting some really cool hardware. The problem is you never know what secrets are hiding underneath this thing. So my first piece of advice for anybody who picks up a secondhand car, completely take it apart down to the bones. Everything has to come off, inspect everything, everything that moves. Uh, and the reason why you want to do that is because you really don't know what the history of this thing is. So you don't know if it's been well taken care of. You don't know if it's been abused. And a lot of cars, quite frankly, have some issues that you really are not familiar with until you have a chance to open it up and look at it yourself and say, oh, I get it. So for me, this is a new thing because I am a complete newbie to the Arma platform. I've never owned an Arma. So this is going to be a brand new introduction. But I mean, first things first, you can see just from the body, it's definitely been, um, it's been used. Let's just say it's been beaten up a bit. But overall from the outside, it's in pretty decent shape. You can see that these are not the stock tires. These are some HPI rims with some um, Proline, um, what are they, Batlands? Um, let's see, yep, Proline Batlands. So, yeah, so they're Proline Batlands. So they're actually pretty decent tires, um, but this front bumper's cracked up. So, um, and like around the back, it looks like they put on a new wing. Uh, well, it's been trashed around a little bit, so it's not that new. Um, but the under, this really tells a story. You know, just looking at the chassis, this thing's been run. Of course, this is nothing that a coat of paint won't fix, but this has been run. Uh, you can also see there's a lot of rust going through. So one of my quick tips from a long, long time ago is that if you take a car and you throw it around, just take some WD-40, some silicon, or whatever your preferred lubricant is, just give a little dab on each of these things. That stops that from happening. But overall, okay, that's not bad. The shocks seem to be in good condition. They move, nothing binds. So let me go ahead and open up the cover and show you the real problem with this car. So those of you who know Armas will immediately see the issue. This guy has the original Arma BLX 180 ESC in it. It looks like it's a good ESC. Didn't strike anything weird to me when I got it. Although the guys at Hobby Hangar, they're straight up guys. So they give me a, a they give me a rundown of what's going on. This ESC 
let's just say it had some issues. Uh, let's just say it had some serious issues. Let's just say that a lot of these things burst into flames. And um, so people had some very bad luck with these ESCs. So the very first thing that I'm doing to this car is taking this stupid thing out so I can send it back to Horizon Hobby. Now I just actually did a Facebook post on this. Um, this is a well-known issue. It's a well-documented issue and Horizon is being really good about it. They just acknowledge they, they, they have a bad product and they're fixing it. So there's a newer version of this ESC. It's the BLX 180. Now this, for those of you who aren't familiar with Armas and I'll admit I wasn't, this is basically a Mamba Monster 2, Mamba Monster X class ESC, at least it is on paper. Uh, it's supposed to be, I think, 120 or 150 amps uh, continuous draw, uh, which sounds really good. Um, but apparently for this first generation device, that was just too much for it to handle. Um, now, you can't really not, because a lot of first generation uh, electronics products that have to do high power applications have issues. Look at Traxxas with the X-Max. Traxxas has been doing this a long, long time, but the first X-Max ESCs has some issues too. So sometimes it happens to the best companies. So I'm not gonna hold that against it. However, as most of you know, I have a nice, strong, long-standing relationship with my good buddies at Castle Creations. So I'm thinking that no matter what, a Castle system's gonna go back in this thing. Now I have a decision. Do I wanna keep this a basher or do I want it to make into a speed run car? Right now I'm thinking that Probably what I should do is check it out, keep it like it came, you know, learn the platform and what better way to learn the platform than by using it the way that the makers intended. And after I get familiar with it and screw around with it, then I might do something different with it. That's kind of what I did with, um, with my other bashers. That's, that's how the busy split off and became scratch. So two cars became, well, one car became two. So. You never know, I might end up doing something like that with this car where it might beget, beget, spawn. <laughs> it might cause the creation of another Arma dedicated speedrunner. That may or may not happen, I don't know. But first things first, I'm just gonna dive in, learn the platform and see what's going on. But back to the original point, this ESC's gotta go. <laughs> so in the short term, I'm probably gonna throw in my Castle Creations Mama Monster X in here um, and um, and I've got some interesting um, ideas I'm cooking up. So I'll let you know what I'm gonna do for the motor in a later post. All right, but first things first, I gotta get that ESC out of here. All right, so I just hit up my bag of tricks. Got my handy Andy cordless driver. This is a godsend, by the way. If you don't have one of these, you should get one. All right, so I believe these are all two millimeter screws. The ESC is held in with two screws and then the power switch here. The ESC is held in with two screws right here and the power switch is held in with two screws. Actually, is it? No, power switch just has one screw holding it in right there. And I'm also gonna have to get into the receiver box over here so I can unplug that. So we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. So, let me grab this so I don't lose anything. You know what? Might as well grab a fresh one so it's nice and clear. All right, so let's start. Let's do, as my buddy Blacksmith RC would say, let's make it do what it do. Like I said, this thing makes quick work of screws. It is a definite time saver if you have any kind of serious maintenance to do. I tell you, this guy did not believe in lubricating. Okay, screws are open. That pops out. So, I might as well pull the receiver while I'm at it which means, is this secured here? Okay, it just pops out. Okay. But this is a nice little improv job here. Okay. All right, so 
since I'm not keeping these electronics, might as well not even bother. You know what? I might actually try to run it with my Castle ESC. So I'm, I'm going to leave that in place for the time being. So let's undo the motor wires. Now this surprises me. This might be part of the reason for failure. These are some thin little wires. Um, if I have to guess, I will say these might be 12 gauge. I'm gonna guess they're 12 gauge, but they seem thin to me. So I'm looking through. One of those little rules of thumb that I like to use is that your motor wires should at least be the same gauge as the ESC wires and this is a 10 gauge these are 10 gauge wires going into the ESC and looks like 12 gauge wires going out that in itself is a problem but what do I know I'm just a little lowly little aerospace engineer I'm sure someone put some thought into this but I know Castle uses some big ESCs and oh that's special they have a little raised platform down here raised platform hmm that sounds familiar oh these, these guys did it first but there's a little raised platform down here that the servo wires go through okay so that has to come off and it looks like it attaches from the bottom because of course it attaches from the bottom why would you put things in from the top all right so these different type of screws. One. I'm gonna guess that is this one. This one. missing one. Where's the last one? Right there. Okay. Now I got it. Five screws. Okay. All right. That's all I need there. Oh, well, that's cute. So let me just show you guys what I got here. So it looks like Arma actually paid a little bit of attention to try to dress things up. You got this nice little wire holder underneath here, as you can see there, that holds everything in place and tries to keep it looking nice and pretty. All right, so you can pull them out this way and this way. So now the ESC, so now the ESC is now free from the car. I'm just gonna set this here and I'll just put the servo back in position because I am going to keep the servo. This servo apparently does a good job. I'm cheap. Why replace something that doesn't need to be replaced? So the servo can stay. The ESC's gotta go. All right, so. Just because, well, I'm just gonna throw it on any channel just because. Okay, so where did that tube go? It's on it. Okay, so, so this is an interesting take on the waterproof box. Because normally you've got something else that helps things go through. But in this case, you just have a little, little divot that comes out of there that pushes it. So in this case, you just have a little divot that just pops in here and the gasket just holds into place there. I guess it works. I'm assuming it works. Although maybe it didn't work that well because Arma just, I was cruising around the website and Arma just updated 
their um, their receiver box for the new 2008 versions. So maybe what I might do is update the receiver box to the new version. Okay, it helps if you feed the wires through the right hole. So I might have to update to the new version of the receiver box, or I might say screw it and install one of, I've got a bunch of XL1 receiver boxes sitting around that I bought for spares because they were cheap. They're surprisingly good receiver box. So I was actually thinking about using them for some other stuff. As you know, the problem with receiver boxes is that they're matched pretty much to model. So it's kind of tough sometimes to shoehorn in a receiver box that wasn't really made for that car. <sighs> okay, I had to beat that through off camera. <sighs> okay, so now this can go back in position here. I'll go ahead and secure the screws first. Now, one thing I did notice, it looks like I'm missing a bevel screw right there. Fortunately, I have got spares. I think I talked about this before. One of the cheapest things that you can do to make your RC life a whole lot better is to buy big spare screw kits. Now, I think I talked about this before. When you're using electric drivers make especially if they have a torque setting make sure that you have that setting really low because if you're drilling you're screwing in a plastic it's really 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 easy to over torque them and if you over torque them they're done so make your life easier use a low torque setting and then hand tighten it in the last little bit since this isn't going to be permanent, I'm not going to bother messing around with that. There's the last screw. Of course it's on the bottom. Why would it be on the top where I can actually find it? Okay. Last screw goes here. All right. Okay. So now going to throw this receiver back in the receiver box. I'll let it come out and play later. Not even paying attention to what channel I'm plugging it into because it doesn't matter because it can't run right now because there's no ESC. Now, I'm mainly just putting it all back together now because I just don't want to lose anything. I'll go back and I'll make it work right later. So now I've got four screws I need to go back on for the receiver box. Now you might ask yourself, why didn't I put a battery on this thing? Fire it up. Just to check out the electronics, just to make sure that there's nothing really crazy happening in here. Well, that's pretty simple. The guy's a hobby hanger already did that for me. So, um, I'm a strong believer in trust but verify, but in this case, I actually trust these guys. They said they checked it out. They said that they ran it. Everything worked. I believe them. So their word is as good as gold for me. If you have a good relationship with your local hobby shop, you may have the same level of trust. However, some of these guys, I might not want to trust them as far as I can throw them, but you didn't hear me say that. Okay, but like I said, the hobby hanger guys, they've never done me wrong. And I've been dealing with these guys for some years now, so they're good. So, all right. 
So now, so just for those who are not familiar with this platform, the, the Arma Typhoon, now I've heard people say it two different ways. I've heard it's pronounced Typhoon and I've heard it pronounced Typhon. I know it's spelled like Typhon, but I can't bring myself to use that in general conversation. So I'm calling it a Typhoon until somebody corrects me. Okay, so as you can see, the Typhoon is actually a pretty beefy 1A scale platform. You've got this big, rigid, aluminum chassis in the back here and that thing makes it it's a, I believe it's three millimeters thick so it's a pretty solid chunk of aluminum and it's bent up slightly on the sides which actually adds extra rigidity I'll spare you the engineering stance but it makes it a pretty pretty solid backbone but in addition to that you also have these plastic reinforcements that mount here to the chassis and up high to basically secure the front and rear clips. So it looks like overall architecture is kind of similar to the Slash 4x4, which I'm familiar with. You got a center chassis and then a front and rear clip that can pop out, but it's a different take on it. So they have to throw a little spin to it. You got these big beefy differential units back here and um, they are big and they are beefy. Everything's being driven with these big dog bones and these are big dog bones. I they look like they're about five millimeters in diameter. They may be even bigger. Uh, I'll measure that in a later video. But you've got big diff in the back, same big diff up in the front, and then you've got a center diff here, which in my case is a very rusty center diff. Actually, we got very rusty center diff, actually very rusty spur and a very rusty pinion here but that's nothing a little bit of oil won't fix. Again, it looks like the previous owner did not believe in lubricant. That could go a lot of bad weight. Okay, so it looks like they did not believe in lubricating gears. Don't know why, uh, but I do. So I'm gonna take care of that. So up front also, you've got some pretty beefy bell cranks here. So you've got this big block of aluminum the sandwich between the aluminum plate, so you have a big solid foundation for all the suspension to bolt into. Um, the nylon plastic that they use is really beefy. So, I mean, really beefy. Like These look like they can take some good hits. Um, so, maybe there's no need for any RPM upgrades with this thing. It looks like it's pretty beefy from the factory. Um, don't know what this is all about. Looks like there's some spacers in here that looks like it's shimmed up to try to get the slop out. So I'm gonna assume that's factory. Um, but that might be something I just wanted to look into, figure out what's going on there. Um, coming around the rear end, again, oh, this is kind of cool. This car has front and rear sway bars installed. They look like they're pretty beefy. In size, so these actually look a little, a little bit thicker than the slash 4x4 ones that I have installed on um, my slash and XL ones. I need to just go back and actually measure that and confirm that though. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of the things that I can say just holding the car in my hand is that it feels rigid, it's pretty solid. The other thing I can say is that it feels heavy, that's another little issue. Now, one thing I will say, I'm most familiar with the Traxxas cars, and Traxxas use a lot of plastic. A lot of people talk down about that. The thing about using a lot of plastic, though, is plastic is light. The lighter your car is, the less power it takes to make the thing move. Also, you have to have less rigid, or also you don't need as much beefy structure to keep everything from folding up with a plastic car because things are lighter so there's fewer forces to absorb so the heavier you make your car the beefier you have to make your car so that's why some things are a tank like this thing i probably need to grab my fish scale but just well i'll look it up um but it feels like this is probably about 10 pounds empty um, I'll double check that, but this, this is not a light car. Um, the ESC, you know, that doesn't really have much weight, but yeah, this is a, this is a pretty beefy car altogether. I, I mean, this, 
This feels about as heavy as Dizzy and, um, and Surly, fully loaded. Um, those are about 11 pounds cars with batteries. So I'm guessing that this guy might actually, with batteries, might come in at like 12, 13 pounds. I need to look that up. Um, actually, you know, I would venture to say it probably comes in just slightly under 11 pounds because that's what a lot of these power systems are rated for. I'm not going to just make up stuff. I'm going to find their information. I'll post it in the video. All right. So, okay. So, again, now that I have this thing out, just give it a closer look before I put it in the envelope and send it out. And as you can see, it is an Arma, you focus, Arma BLX 180. So, focus. Let's do this. There we go. And as you can see, come on, you can do it. Let's try this. So this little BLX-180 gets to go back to its home in, um, in a Horizon Hobby tomorrow. And hopefully in about a week or so, a BLX-185 will be showing up to take its place. Take its place on eBay so that I can pay off this car so my wife doesn't yell at me. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the quick walkthrough or the not so quick walkthrough, we know how that goes. All right, so what's on my agenda? So I'm replacing that power system, or I should say I'm replacing the ESC. When the ESC comes back, the power system is gonna go on eBay along with the electronics. Uh, other things that I may do, uh, this body is not in bad condition, but I'm probably going to just be me, buy a new body, paint it up, do something like that, do something a little unique with it. See how they have this, imitation mesh pattern going through here i know how to fiberglass so i'll probably do something that's similar to this but with actual composite Ooh, i have a source for red and black composite red and black carbon kevlar that would be sweet on this all right let me think about that and i'll get back to you guys all right so i've got some other interesting ideas cooking up um but you're just gonna have to stay tuned to see what I do. All right, guys, our house 21 sign and out. Remember mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, do it all over again. And don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And also don't forget to check out all the interesting things I have coming up here shortly. I'm sitting on a boatload of videos that I filmed. I just haven't had a chance to edit up. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna fix that up. I'm gonna do right by you guys because I've been gone for too long. And I, I got a lot of stuff I need to say. All right, guys. Our house went one sign out. Oh, and also stay tuned for... I got a lot of cool stuff coming up from my sponsors. Um, that's my, my primary sponsors are Venom, Castle Creations, and I got a strong relationship with Delta Plastics now. Even though I don't have any Delta Plastic bodies on my cars, which is interesting, but Delta Plastics makes a pretty solid product, and they are an awesome supporter of what we do, especially in the speed running community. So check them out. All right guys, but our house only one sign out. Peace.